the mango tree, me honey, and me go boon, no, no, soon. Something like that. Oh, didn't know you were there. That's how I lose subscribers. Hi, David Zeritsky for the Bond Experience. Welcome back. You could tell by the title of this video and the thumbnail, we're back with Olibar Brown. Yes, Olibar Brown, who has partnered with Eon, the company, the production company that does all those incredible 007 films. They partnered together for phase three, or German phase three, of a capsule line. This is a collection, and this is called the Heritage Collection for a very specific reason. You see, it focuses on three bonds, three of the first bonds, Sean Connery, George Lazenby, and Roger Moore. And George Lazenby has a bit of a, a cameo in this collection, but you'll see very soon. Today, we're going to be talking about part one of our discussion and our collection. And we're going to take you through all the pieces. We're going to be talking about fit and feel and all those. We're going to be talking about what we think of the individ individual pieces. Um, a little bit of housekeeping, right? I mean, you know, for those of you joining for the first time, a lot of you are on this video specifically to say, hey, I am going to buy something from the collection, but I don't know how to size it. How, how do these things run? Is it, is it change? Is it a medium, true medium? All right, here we go. I am five foot nine. I am 40 here in the chest. I'm 31 in the waist, all right? That'll give you an idea of what things will fit like. Now, I am wearing right now from the phase two, the Dr. No toweling polo. And the reason I'm wearing this is because it goes with their first piece, which we're gonna have to focus down, but it is Dr. No pants. What's your name? Ryder. Ryder what? Honey Ryder. What's so funny about it? Nothing. It's a very pretty name. What's your name? James. Okay, let's describe the pants a little bit to you. First of all, they're tailored fit. They're flat fronted trousers. You can see here, no pleats. They're woven in Portugal out of 100% cotton. The garment, this particular garment is washed. It gives it that kind of casual appearance. You can see that, you know, it, there's a nice bit of wrinkling, but not a crazy amount. It's got frog mouth side pockets. Does everybody know what a frog mouth is? That's a frog mouth pocket right there. It's got jetted back pockets. So you can see the jetted back pockets back here. It's got this particular piece that is very much that Sean Connery look. I'm going to kind of pull up here. You can see I tucked my shirt in. And what that does is it really shows off this extended waistband tab. It's got a hook and eye closure. It's got the nickel side effect adjusters. That's, you know, very well known for all of our brown. You can make them tighter or looser as the case may be. What I like about these is obviously the casual look. Now I'm going to be frank with you. It's a lot of blue. It is blue. Did I mention it's blue? So you've got to really kind of get into that whole mode of this was the early 60s, um, wearing that one color. By, by the way, very, very um, Harry Saltzman, by the way, who loved to use wear just one colors. But you can see in the back, um, I, I found the fit to be kind of right out of the box, really good. I did obviously hem the pants. And by the way, those eagle eyes people can see that I'm wearing the Thunderball espadrilles from phase two. Let's take a look at the pants themselves. You can see that they are not skinny or super slim. I like that, right? It's, it's a little bit more, I would say it's actually between a slim and a traditional fit, all right? Especially with my legs. I do not have thick legs, as a lot of you know. But from a comfort standpoint, you've got these nice pockets that fit really well. I'll kind of come up in a little bit close. Now, this obviously does not have belt loops because it doesn't need a belt. Would I wear this out in the wild with blue and blue? I don't think so. What I would probably do is pair it with a different color to kind of break it up, which by the way, is a really good dovetail into our next piece that we're gonna talk about. Okay, this is their Dr. No knitted 
polo. And you're like, well, well, hold on a second, David. Didn't he wear that blue polo? In the postcards, in those kind of lobby cards that you will, they decided to play with the coloring and Olibar Brown took that inspiration. And don't forget, this is not something that they're trying to create cosplay. What they're doing is they're taking the inspiration of what you've seen in the theaters, in the poster cards, in the posters, and obviously in the movies, and they're aligning them to modern cuts, modern tailoring, and you know, the, the, the fabric that's really become synonymous with both James Bond and with Olibar Brown. For example, this, let me come in close, is made up of 50% silk and 50% cotton. And what that does basically is it gives this knitted look to it. All right. Now you might be able to tell this is, this is sheer. Okay. So, um, just as a warning on this, uh, it is very cool because I like these type of lightweight polos. Um, probably looks better if you have a tan. I, I look like winter translucent. So it, Probably doesn't look like the magazine's going to look, but anyway, let's take a look at it from the side. By the way, every single thing that you're going to see on my top half today is a size medium. I decided to go in one size with this just to see how everything fits and looks. All right, so that'll give you an idea. And by the way, the pants, interestingly enough, I did get a size 33, which I had to get hemmed, but it, they're loose. All right, so my suggestion for you is get your correct size. If you're a 32, get a 32. Uh, you may want to size up one, but don't do like I did and, and size up two. Don't do it. Um, I'm going to have to like really kind of pull this in a little bit or maybe have Steve the tailor get to it. But let's get back to the polo itself. Let's take a look at the back. You can see that the medium is a nice fit. I mean, it's very comfortable. I can move around in it really well. Um, it's got a nice fit. I will say this, this particular top, I think would be best on somebody taller than me. Again, I'm five foot nine, somebody who's um, just under six feet or over six feet. This would be perfect. Why? Because the length on this is a little bit long and it's a ribbed hem. So I can't really have it tailored. If I had it tailored, then I'd have to do kind of, you know, one of these and I would lose the ribbed hem. It's got these really cool ribbed cuffs, right? You see these ribbed cuffs right here and it's got this really cool ribbed hem. If I get it tailored for somebody of my um, uh, challenge, as far as height is concerned, then I'm gonna lose that. I don't want to lose that because it's such a cool 1960s look. Now, in the visual, and I know we're getting into detail, they don't pair this uh, on the postcard with the blue pants. They pair it with pants more like this. Okay, and just like that, we are now, see that? We've got kind of like a brown putty, beige-ish. This is much more like the postcard, much more like the inspiration. And again, if you want it to be kind of like in the picture, you would tuck this in to your pants. And by the way, that would also take care of the length on me if I tucked it in, it would be perfect. I like this. This is going to go well in the summer months and it's going to breathe incredibly well. I give it thumbs up all around. However, we're not done with Dr. No. One more piece. Yes, folks, they're back. They're back. The poster shorts. In this particular case, this is the Dr. No on a bulldog. And the bulldog is the, the cut, the type of cut of the bathing suit. And yes, it does come in this incredible bag, which by the way, is also waterproof. Put your bathing suit dry or wet in there. Maybe not wet, maybe just wring it out a little bit, but check these out. Okay, so we've got to take a good look at this. You've got obviously the Dr. No font over here. You've got right in an appropriate place, the lipstick and the bullet case detail. Let me get up a little bit close so you can see that. And then of course you've got that 007 on there with the, is that a Ruger or Luger? Someone's gonna, someone's gonna correct me. And if that's not enough, when you're walking away from people, they get the same view. Let's talk about some of the details on this. You've got obviously that back pocket that zips up, very, very handy for your credit card. And by the way, all of the items, I didn't mention this before, all of the items have this, let's see if you can see it, 
the 007 hang tag. It's subtle. It has all the bar brown in the front and 007 on the back, so you don't quite see it. It's not like a 007 comes walking at you. Although, quite frankly, a 007 does come walking at you, so I stand corrected. Um, what I do like about this is it's got really generous pockets and it's got these side tabs that Olibar Brown is now famous for. You can see it says Olibar Brown on there. And that's really to adjust if these things are too tight, if they're too loose, you can make all those adjustments. But these things are back. I know a lot of people really enjoyed them and have fun with them. Uh, some people, it's not their cup of tea. So if it's not your cup of tea, guess what? We've got some more things to show you, that's all. All right, so I have a feeling that this may be a favorite of a lot of people. Why is that? Well, a lot of it is, is that obviously it's got a very classic look to it. And we're gonna be talking about it in a moment, but let's talk about George Lazenby. I mean, George Lazenby, George Lazenby is the Boba Fett of James Bond movies. What do I mean by that? Well, he's, he's not in a lot of the franchise, but a lot of people think he's just so badass and the movie's so badass that they connect with the character. They connect with the character that is George Lazenby and James Bond. And let's face it, more, more men have walked on the moon than have been James Bond. So even though he was James Bond once, you still gotta give it to him. And this outfit screams George Lazenby. I mean, you know, I'm standing in front of my display, but this is a display to itself. All right, let's talk about it. First of all, I've paired this with the appropriate pink shirt. And let's come in a little bit closer. I don't know if you could see that. It's a blue knitted tie. It's actually a vintage blue knitted tie, which seems to be appropriate. Um, this is a full suit. Why don't we take a look at it and come back a little bit. All right, let's step back so you can see the, the whole effect, so to speak. And by the way, I am actually pairing these with a pair of light beige chukka boots. That's not correct. They're supposed to be kind of this cream uh, loafer slip on, but now you can see the whole suit I'll walk this way so you can see the whole thing kind of walking about. You know, he's, he's got that really cool walk that I do not have. I've got, to, I've got to work on a cool walk one of these days. But you can see kind of the whole suit in action. That's really important because a lot of the times in a catalog or online, you're seeing it in a static sense. Let's take a look, though, at each individual piece, starting with the jacket. And we're going to have to take it off for this. All right, here we are. And I'm gonna cheat a little bit just so I get all the facts correct. First of all, it's cotton and blended, blended twill. It is woven in Portugal. It is 57% linen, 43% cotton, a buggy lining. Let's take a look at that. And by the way, these, um, these closures, those are made out of, uh, they're nylon, they're branded, there's two buttons. It's got a welted pocket on the chest it's got pocket flaps at the hip. It is, as you would imagine, single vented. And it's got a three button cuff. As you can see right here. And that's important to know. And why is that? Because the devil is in the details. Let's take a look at the interior of this jacket. We'll take it off of the hanger. You can see that it is relatively unstructured. It does have uh, a, some pockets, which is always handy. Um, I'm not too sure what a buggy lining is. There were no spiders or moths in here. So I'm not too sure what a buggy lining is, but I'm sure somebody is going to post down below what a buggy lining is. Um, here's a better view of that vent in the back. And by the way, <laughs> I didn't even open it yet. I bet you that would have made the suit look really good. So we're gonna open that up on the next view. Hey folks, this is real, all right? This is, this is what happens when a Bond fan gets these clothing and it's a real moment. So guess what? We're not gonna edit that out, but we are gonna remove that back piece. The feeling of this, because of that linen and cotton blend, and I think the suit in the movie was probably cotton. Maybe it had a blend of something else. It feels wonderful. It's light. Um, I could absolutely see this in the spring, summer, especially in the summer. You imagine wearing this, for example, going to a wedding, you've got that little pop of pink, you've got that blue that really stands out, and you've got this with the matching pants. And let's talk about the pants. 
The pants are a tailored fit and a flat front trouser, not totally unlike the Dr. No ones that we just showed you, but obviously these are 57% linen, 43% cotton. It's got these narrow side pockets positioned at the side seam. You see that there? The welt back pockets right here, and it's got an extended waistband tab with hook and eye closure. That's right here. Okay. And again, it's very similar to that Dr. No. Sorry about my shirt coming untucked. There's wiring everywhere. A Brandon nylon button inside closure. And then uh, it's got also, don't forget, those patented Olibar Brown enclosures, those side adjusters that really make it handy. And again, I probably did get one size too big, bad on me, but there you have it. And I think the angle's making it seem a little bit shorter than it is. Um, it is uh, generous. I would say it's a little bit looser than the ones uh, that you saw from Dr. No, but that'll give you a good idea of the fit of the pants. So it's not hard to imagine that a lot of you are definitely, definitely saying to yourself, all right, you know, how do I connect on this? What's my size? So this is a medium top. It's a 33 pants. Again, I probably could have gone down a little bit smaller. They're, they're pretty loose on me, but this medium top seems to fit me really well. Um, it's got room and I, I've, I've got this barrel chest, so I can't help this, but it's got room, but you can see the fit in the side. Let me do my posture correctly. Hello. You can see it in the back. So now we've got the whole suit put back together and I have undone that little flap thread in the back. And it does give me a little bit more relief. Certainly the lines look a little bit better, but this is one of these uh, pieces that I would mix and match. So let's talk about the real world. Would I wear all of this together? Yeah, I actually would. I mean, these, these type of suits, these, these light colored, you know, beige off-white suits, are back. They've been back for a while. I don't know if they ever left, but they look really great, whether you're in the Northeast or the South or somewhere overseas, it really doesn't matter. Add to that, that it's linen and cotton and really breathes. And this has a lot of versatility. I would also mix and match. I would wear the pants separately. I would wear the jacket separately. Allegedly, you're not supposed to do that because the coloring gets thrown off. But I think that's if you're dry cleaning and washing this. But this is really, really good. And by the way, one of the things that you can do, let me, uh, let me take off my mic so I don't totally obliterate your ears. You could even take off this tie. I wonder if I can do it like, uh, like Daniel Craig in No Time to Die. He just whips it right off. Let's see if I can do that. Oh yeah, <laughs> that wasn't a special effect. Although I've got whiplash. Um, yeah, so you could definitely wear this without. That looks a little severe. So let me undo one button. Here we go. And suddenly you've got a much more casual look. Uh, it really does look good, I think, with the tie. What do you think? Do you think it looks better with the tie, without the tie? Again, it changes the look, but I think it's one of those things that you can be very versatile and make it your own, make it personal. This half zip merino knit from all of our brown feels very much at home in front of my Moonraker display. And that's because it's pretty bang on. And what I mean by that is it captures the, the feeling, the mode of Bond during that scene. You know, when he's taking a look at Venny Glass, did I just pronounce that wrong? I probably did. And suddenly he's attacked. You remember the scene very well, I'm sure. Um, it's an amazing scene. Man against man, glass against floor. It's explosive. It's very Roger Moore. And then you've got that great line at the end, play it again. You remember it very well. But everybody remembers that Sneaky Bond outfit. I mean, Roger Moore did Sneaky Bond so well. You have to admit, especially in his clothing. So all of our Brown decided to pay homage to that and create this. This is a merino knit made in Italy half zip polo. It's got these great ribs here as well as around the waist. And again, this is a medium. I keep saying that, but it's important for you to 
judge the sizing. Some of you are saying, I like it, I want it, but 40 and 31, is that the look that I want? Or do I wanna go up to a large? Or do I wanna go up to a small? I think this is exactly how I like to wear things. By the way, Bond wears black loafers and he wears black pants. I thought that was a bit severe for this discussion, so I have these puppy tooth, yes, puppy tooth, not hound's tooth, puppy tooth pants on, and I do have black loafers, so we're nearly rocking the whole look. All right, we gotta talk about the zipper, because the zipper, when I saw this in the catalog, was one of the number one things that I really liked. I said, my gosh, that's so cool. Let's bring on the zipper. That What's nice about this is you can obviously adjust it being a zipper, you can be a little bit more stead, you know, you could be a little archer-like, or you can be a little like, you know, da-da-da-da, you know, 19, 1970s look with a lot of, and maybe too much chest hair coming out. So I, I decided to go maybe like corner of the way up. I think that's perfect for me, but I liked and still like that vintage look of, you know, this kind of zip from the 1970s. And let's face it, Moonraker, Moonraker is a guilty pleasure. I mean, it's kind of coming back in style. You know, a lot of people like the weaponry, the artistry, but they also like some of the campiness of it. This, this polo, this half zip merino polo brings it all back in a wonderful black. We have so many things that are navy. Now we've got something that's in black. Let's take a look at the back again, medium. The side again, and this side. See? And by the way, action-oriented, you can really move a lot in this. Uh, it's great. It's got a good feel to it. I like when people do merino wool and it doesn't feel like wool. It's soft. It's obviously a long hair merino. Uh, it's got really good hand. Let me get up nice and close so you can see it. It's it's just, it's luxury, right? And it's it's black, so it kind of goes with everything and anything, and you can wear it to work. You could also wear it out for play. You know, this is the type of color and fit and look that transitions with everything. You know, there's harder things in life than being tied up to a beautiful Bond girl. And for your eyes only, definitely puts Bond and Roger Moore through his paces. So Olibar Brown had to pay homage to that incredible journey. What they did was they came up with this For Your Eyes Only t-shirt. But quite frankly, to call this a t-shirt would be undervaluing it. This is an incredible v-neck. It is part linen and part silk. We've got to get up and close and personal for this to really appreciate this. It's an 18 gauge knit, so it's got some, it's got some heft to it. But check out, check out these. Check out the sleeve hem and check out the v-neck. That is a chevron pattern. It's really cool. It's something very unique to this. And by the way, you've got that rib detail behind here and below. You can see that it gives a really nice fit. This is, again, a medium. Everything I ordered was in a medium. Whether it fits or not, this is the way it looks. But I think it fits really well. So you've got that medium here. Let's take a look at the back. Okay. And one of the nice things about this v-neck is it just feels good we always talk about that feel and the function even though this is called a t-shirt it's got this kind of elegance to it i think you could wear this with pretty nice beige pants or something like that i'm wearing kind of these stone um beige chinos like he did in the film when was he tied up like was he was i i can't remember how he was tied up but the parrot knows, trust me. But this is such a cool detail. By the way, made in Italy. And you can tell because even the details on the shoulders and on the seams, the blue itself, I hope you can appreciate the blue on this. That really is very striking. I can't say enough about this piece. And I love that they did this because I think we've all done our own version of the V-neck from For Your Eyes Only. But this is one that the interpretation and the homage to it is just one level up, and it's so very Olivar Brown. I just uh, I just went down the banister, and the finial didn't shoot out in time, so I'm in a little bit of pain. 
All right, this could only mean one thing. I am in front of the Octopussy display for a very particular reason. I am wearing the Octopussy Harrington, all of our Brown's inspiration and interpretation of the Harrington that Bond wears when there is that incredible attack on the palace towards the end of the movie. And I'm even wearing it with a pair of blue slacks, trousers, some black loafers. I've got the white shirt. Yeah, I'm going all out, folks. And, you know, we need to really talk about this because although Octopussy is a lot of fun, I don't think that I would go out all in blue like this. It seems a little sneaky bond, uh, except for the white pop of shirt. So this is not something I would wear, meaning this whole entire outfit. So in order to talk about this jacket, let me wear, let me sh uh, show you some pants that I would pair with this jacket. So much more natural. I mean, let's face it, this is how I would go out. Uh, still keeping on the white Sea Island cotton shirt. I like the contrast with the blue. And now I pair it with some stone colored chinos. You could do beige, you could do brown, just blue and blue. You saw what was happening in there. Let me get the details right. So I've got my little cheat sheet. First of all, it's a garment dyed cotton. Look at the blue. Look how deep it is. I mean, this is this is in a really good lighting where you could see the type of blue and just how beautiful it is. Blue. I mean, my type of blue. Uh, it is a blouse in color with hook and eye fastening. So let's get up close and you can see right here, this will fasten. And that blouse in has that really kind of unstructured feel. The whole thing has an unstructured feel to it, of course. Nickel effect zip front closure with a flap that goes overneath, uh, goes on top of it. Really good protection, but also it flattens the line. It gives you that, that silhouette that you're looking for, that uh, almost like military-like silhouette, which is perfect for Bond, isn't it? A button cuff with adjustable tab, always handy. A pronounced rib hem. So take a look down here. This screams 80s, but I love this vintage look. This is exactly what Olibar Brown does so well. Take a look at it in the back. I love this hem right here, this nice kind of pullable hem, which is fantastic. Um, that 100% cotton also has some slanted welt chest pockets right here, just like you see in the film. And it has patch pockets at the hip with branded buttons. Okay, them's the details. Let's talk about the feel. I'm here to tell you that when I first saw this in the catalog, I was like, where was that scene? I mean, was it when he was in San Francisco? And then I'm like, oh, okay, it's the palace scene. And I was like, okay, it's, it's a Harrington. It's the Octopussy Harrington. And although I like the film, I'm not gaga over it like other people. But I've got to tell you, when I put this thing on, Oh my gosh, I love this. It's not your typical Harrington. I mean, it's got that kind of 80s vintage -y type of vibe going on that captures that octopusy moment. When you think octopusy, you think 80s Roger Moore. This piece screams 80s Roger Moore, but they've updated it. They made it more modern. They've modernized the fit and the look of it. It's not at quite as billowy as it is in the movie. But what an iconic scene. Per research for this video, I went back and watched that scene. And what a scene it is. When Bond comes in with the balloon, with Q, and their mayhem is just ensuing with the acrobats and obviously the octopusy circus bouncing all around. But that one shot where Bond comes down the banister, I mean, that's iconic. You know, you just, you're just feeling it, feeling it, and then suddenly he shoots the banister away. This jacket creates that invisible moment that happens between these two things right here that really brings us back. Plus, I love the jacket. Let's take a look at the back. Again, it's a medium. I feel like I can move perfectly in this. It's not tight on me. It's not skinny. It's not overly fitted. Let's take a look. I'm moving. I'm probably making terrible sounds with my mic, but here it is. I can even put on a clown nose. Don't do that. This is a serious video. Anyway, 
I am digging this jacket. It's one of my favorites, very unstructured on the inside, but really the details, the pockets, the patches, the way it feels, I think they've captured that moment perfectly. You know, it's no secret that my favorite Roger Moore film is Live and Let Die. And one of the reasons is it's, it's so fun, but it, it's Roger Moore kind of in a more serious bond, but there's honestly nothing serious about this. And I'm so glad Oliver Brown did this one because this is their bulldog done with the Live and Let Die artwork. And I'm coming up close so you can fully appreciate the colors. This is by far, out of all of the poster shorts, this is my favorite. First of all, it's got a simple white base. And just to be very transparent, the Dr. No one that we saw earlier with its bright yellow was bright yellow. Um, yeah. So, I mean, I like the white. It's a little bit more traditional. And then you've got this explosion of artwork and color. I mean, look at this. This would take you a long time to kind of work through and see. And by the way, again, if that wasn't enough, you've got it on the back as well. This is a statement piece. This is uh, whimsical. It's artwork. You're wearing your artwork on your lower GI track. And that's okay. I mean, if you've got a sense of whimsy and humor, uh, avant-garde, this is the thing for you. It screams 1970s James Bond. It screams Roger Moore. And I mean, come on, let's face it. There's been a lot of complaints about color being lost in the world of James Bond, especially in the poster and the artwork. This is an explosion. It's like Van Gogh popped everywhere and made this. You've got those side adjusters again. You've got those great pockets. You even have a zip pocket on the back as if that wasn't enough. Bulldog, by the way, is a little bit longer than the setter. So those of you that thought the setters were too short or don't like to show off too much thigh, uh, these are for you. Uh, these are these are a little bit more kind of like those board shorts of old. But I just wanted to show this off. And I think also it's a great way to end the video because it's so much fun. It's such a cool piece. And here is the reality. We are going to be back. This was part one. We showed you a lot of the pieces. We got into the fine, fine details, things that you would not be able to see on the website. But the website link is below. But we're coming out with part two. Yes, part two is going to have a lot of different things from Sean Connery that I know you're going to want to grab. So we're going to bring you through all those very shortly in a future video. But for now, this has been David Zaritsky for the Bond Experience and All Bar Brown Heritage Line. And we will see you real soon. Take care. Thanks for watching this episode. If you want to be up on the latest from the Bond Experience, just click on this subscribe and subscribe to our channel. You're going to get all the latest and greatest information, plus some exclusive content. And by the way, speaking of content, here's something especially for you, just because we know you. Talk to you soon.